I want to talk about this. So this news came across my timeline recent or just now before I started streaming or before I started recording this podcast. And it's regarding the one and only Heron Preston. My guy Heron Preston has just got a flipping amazing gig um, confirmed here, courtesy of Business of Fashion. It says H&M taps Heron Preston as creative menswear advisor. Now, off the back of the news about Tremaine having to step down at Supreme because he felt like Supreme was systemically racist and all the conversation around that it's quite nice to see somebody from that Virgil Abloh RIP crew um get a chance at doing uh, having one of these jobs where you're kind of you know you got a big job for a big brand and you're kind of overseeing something you know overseeing a whole little team and stuff and maybe that can help out your own little thing so it's kind of cool to see that going so it's really actual article um you know my man you know guy like me doesn't pay for flipping business of fashion accounts and stuff so i had to quickly load the page up and you know and do a little thing so let's see what it says in the actual article on business of fashion so they said the following um h&m has recruited streetwear designer heron preston to be in-house advisor forming what the company calls a long-term partnership that will yield preston's first sorry his own seasonal capsule collections for the brand as well as his input on the menswear line that's pretty incredible so not only is he gonna have um, not only is he going to have a collaboration with H&M, he's also going to have the ability to influence what they do globally overall for menswear. That's a pretty interesting design challenge. I think that's a pretty cool thing to try to tackle. Um, because maybe in some ways, being the creative director supreme is way harder because they're quite locked in to what they do. And also it's not the most, although it's really popular, it's not like a super commercial brand. It's still kind of very niche. It still talks to a particular type of audience. They still do things a certain way. It's still kind of run by one guy and James Jebbia. Do you know what I mean? It's, they don't really have many shareholders they have to answer to apart from um, VF Corp and whatnot. So it probably is a harder job to do because there's a lot more restrictions that you have to kind of, you know, dance around or move around and stuff. But when it comes to the H&M stuff, you would imagine um because it's a corporation they're going to give you a little bit more license to like do some stuff right because they, they basically tapped you because you're this quote-unquote celebrity designer you're well known and then they want to kind of get the most out of you so they're going to give you license to do stuff and then of course if the sales bang then boom you've got the runway to do like way more stuff so maybe there's an argument to be said being the h&m creative advisor for menswear is an actual easier job than being the supreme creative director it doesn't sound like it because supreme is just t-shirt and hoodies but i think there's some truth in it it continues the fast fashion giant, like many other accessible brands, is no stranger to collaborations. Since the early 2000s, H&M has brokered annual collaborations with some of the fashion's biggest names, including Maison Margiela, Stella McCartney and Versace. Um, H&M had made a splash in February after launching a coveted collaboration with celebrity fashion uh, label Sorry Mugler, whose namesake designer Terry Mugler died a year prior. Head of the release, shoppers queued. Okay, cool, we heard about that. Um, but like so many collaborations, the excitement was there for one day and gone the next. With Heron Preston, H&M is breaking this decades-long playbook on collaborations. Instead of investing in a short-term hype that comes with one type, one of type uh, tie-ups, H&M is betting that Preston's continued presence at the brand will boost the appeal of its core products in the long run. The company has dubbed this partnership H2. Ah, get it? Ah. H&M could use the boost. In recent years, the retailer has come under increasing pressure from agile, online-only, fast fashion conglomerates such as Sheen. So H&M is competing with Sheen. Can you imagine that world that we live in? Because you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna wear like fast fashion shit, I would pick, you know, the stuff that you'd get from Uniqlo, H&M, and even Zara over Sheen. But I guess nowadays, because people just want certain looks, you can get a certain look from Sheen. Like if I'm sure there does exist a version of double knee pants if you just want the style. If you want the style of Carhartt double knee pants, I'm sure if you go on Sheen right now, you can find something along those lines for far cheaper than you're going to buy double knee pants even used. They might not be wearable after two wears. They might absolutely disintegrate in the wash. But if you just want the look, then you can do it. So H&M are having to flip and battle with those type of guys in real time, which is fucking crazy because H&M's price point, you know, 
it's it's not expensive, but also it's not as cheap as Sheen. So a lot of people out there that are actually, but which is funny as well. I always sort of think about it. It's whenever I see people on you know fashion Twitter arguing about collaborations, or arguing about collections and whatnot, I always think to myself like, how much actual designer do you actually have in your wardrobe? A lot of these people that have the biggest opinions sometimes or the most controversial ones usually have a wardrobe that consists of mostly high street stuff. But here they are pontificating about collections and what this designer should have done and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, brother, come on, sister, come on. Anyway, it continues. We know people will appreciate the product Heron creates simply because of who he is, says Daniel Herman, director of H&M's menswear business. And we were excited to bring his creative vision deeper inside our process too. Yo, Daniel, pause, brother. Deeper inside our process too. Bro, he really likes Heron, isn't it? He really likes him. Big up, HP. Retailers like Uniqlo have had success by deploying a more permanent collaboration strategy than the sporadic cap capsules. In 2016, the Japanese chain tapped um, French designer Christopher Lemaire or Christophe Lemaire um, to be in the in house artistic director. Um, launching the Uniqlo U line of elevated everyday basics that quickly became a cult favorite among fashion insiders. Since then, Uniqlo U and Uniqlo at large has garnered mainstream popularity among young consumers thanks to high quality products Le Maire's, um signature functional designs and a few viral moments Asics meanwhile has transformed its new sports footwear into a coveted line of fashion forward sports style sneakers courtesy of long-term collaborations with London-based menswear designer Kiko Kostaninov who's also a fervent he was back in the day Virgil hater like you know if you know you know Anyway, Preston will have a wider ranging reign over H&M's menswear offering, um, seeing four pillars, design advisory, which will see him consult on brands, mainline menswear, special collaboration design specifically by Preston, talent curation um, in, intended to allow Preston to connect creatives in his network for additional collaboration with H&M. That is such a genius move. That is such a genius move. It continues, which will include projects such as circular uh, or circulatory. Was how do you say that word? Circular circularity circularity initiative. What the fuck is that? What does circular circularity mean? Me never heard this word. What what does circularity mean? Circularity. What the fuck is that? Round design. What the fuck does round design mean? circularity okay whatever um circularity initiative in which consumers can submit their old clothing oh fuck come on bro come on man just i don't know what do they call it nowadays um repurposed uh re i don't know whatever just use that word circularity man those buzzwords just that just mean they're gonna take your old shit and what stitch new logos on it or double stitch the fucking seam or something like come on or patch up the holes come on bro circularity anyway i love you h&m but you gotta chill can submit their old clothing for their for use in future capsule collections designed by preston which i guess ties into that thing that he did with the new york city fucking department of whatever he did back in the day the idea at first it says as a quote it's for our work to be very experimental, said Preston, who began his int integration with the brand this month with knowledge sharing and consulting session with H&M design team. Look at how they approach this, bro. They had Heron Preston in a whole month before this got announced doing knowledge sharing and consultancy sessions. So basically he went and had one month's worth of training and handover with whoever had that job previously before it was announced. That might be the actual way to go and do these collaborations going forward. Because a lot of these people, they're going to want to tap in or they're going to want to tap up for collaborations. Like if you think about it, a lot of these big um, fashion houses, a lot of these big brands, um, a, lot, a lot of these people basically just want to guarantee sales. And the only way to guarantee sales is to tap up the most popular people, the people that are selling the most. And usually, for the most part, the people who are selling the most are the ones that have the least formal training. But it's also a big risk, right? The ones that at least have the least formal training, it's also a big risk to get them and to plug them into your organization and hope that it kind of works. So what better way to kind of, you know, increase your chance of success by having them come in and actually learn 
how you guys work and how you operate, how you do things before they then go and do their own thing. That is the best way to do it because I know for me, when you start a new job, there's nothing worse than getting shitty training. You get shitty training or you start a new job and you're a bit shy. You don't want to ask any questions because you don't want to seem like you don't know what you're doing. You're a little bit insecure or you're a little bit, you know, whatever it may be. Maybe you don't have the experience anyway. You just got the job off a fluke, whatever it may be. But when you start, you're already starting, you know, kind of at a disadvantage. So you don't even get a chance to even flex whatever creative muscles, um, whatever creative flair you have. You don't even get a chance to flex it because you don't even have to do the fundamentals. Unless you have no other fundamentals, you can't really get creative. So it's really good that they're giving him, hey, here's some training, base level stuff. Here's how we work. Here's how the processes are. Here's how to get things approved. Here's who you need to go to in order to kind of, you know, whatever it may be, just so you can then go in and then if you want to get a bit creative, you want to get a bit innovative, you want to kind of break the rules, you know where, you know, the, you know what the flipping minimum requirements are, you know what the rules are, and you can kind of work around in, in them, over them, wherever it may be. It's a really great way to approach these sort of celebrity collaborations, you know, celebrity quote unquote, I would say, but you know what I mean. It continues. Preston's first 40 piece collection for the retailer is expected to launch in 2024. For the first, uh, for the fast fashion giant working with Preston, a serial collaborator who launched collections with the likes of Calvin Klein, Nike, and even New York De Department of Sanitation. That's what I said before, which may be tie in with the whole um, circularity, circularity thing. Um, offers a chance to tap into the multi hyphenates creative um, cultural cachet among young menswear consumers. And that's where I think Heron might win. Because I think because he's been, he's had the experience of working at Nike having all these collaborations under his belt and always kind of being, I think, a little bit of an outsider because whenever I think of Heron's fashion or his Heron as a, person, as a person, I always think of somebody who, for me, isn't really a fashion guy. He's similar to Tremaine in a way. He's more of an ideas guy. And maybe in Heron, it's more even increased. He's more like a proper, proper ideas guy. So I think ideas guys can approach these sort of challenges a little bit more open-minded because it then becomes uh, a design a design challenge more so than okay I need to kind of get across my creativity or my fashion knowledge or my expertise or prove myself it becomes okay how do I figure out this design problem right like and how do I kind of, and it's an interesting problem to kind of uh, tackle like designing on that sort of scale on is probably something that most people who work in that kind of field would want to you know try their luck at because you get to take some of your ideas that you do with your own brand and you get to kind of you know disseminate it on the biggest scale or you get to try out some new interesting stuff that you would never have access to because you're working at that sort of level and that knowledge you would assume will really help you when you then go back and work on your own brand i think that sort of stuff is way different than having two like you know, fashion brands at the same time. That's probably hard to kind of split your kind of creative muscles or juices, you know, between two of those kind of places. But when you're kind of operating at a really high level or a really overground level with H&M and then you've got your quote unquote underground street level brand, it's a bit easier to kind of take ideas from the top and give them to the bottom and take ideas from the bottom and give them to the top. So I think his knowledge of working within those corporate structures will put him in a way better place than maybe Tremaine. Like he's worked with a he's had he's had a boss. He's you know he's he's had collaborations. Um he's had people maybe checking his work and giving him notes. All those sort of things that maybe somebody that's already kind of done their own thing, had their own clout, kind of maybe find it hard to kind of work in. He probably knows how to kind of work within those constraints and still get his message across. So I think that's going to lend him a good stead. It continues. At the end of the day, we want to stay relevant, says Herman. We wanted to find a way to enhance our designers collaborations in a way that actually brings inspiration into our internal process, not just a project that runs from a limited time the designer was a frequent collaborator of off-white founder virgil abloh with whom he co-founded the streetwear and dj collective bin trill in 2012 that's the interesting thing about ideas isn't it? and that's why i think myself included is so crucial to make sure that you get out all your ideas doesn't matter how dumb they are make sure you ship them and i'm not talking about putting stuff on flipping pdfs or putting stuff on line sheets or saving stuff as png files or having stuff on your lacy drive i mean absolutely you know without 
you know, without any rhyme or reason, shipping your shit. Whether it's a book, whether it's a video, whether it's a mix, whether it's a t-shirt, like ship it. Actually have it available for people to consume, people to buy, people to touch, people to experience. Put it out there because you never know how that piece of work will be looked at many years on when you then do the next big thing. Because at the time when Bin Trill was out here, people were laughing at these guys. They were laughing at them. They were like, what the hell are these guys doing? They think they got this like little streetwear boy band thing. The designs are horrible. This is so cringe. They can't DJ. This is shit. This is lame. And now look, many years since that thing has happened, whenever these guys get referenced in articles, it's always this collective crew, this flipping click, this, this, um, um, this, whatever. Do you know what I mean? They always talk about it in really lofty terms, you know? They talk about it in really lofty terms. And when at the time when it was on, when it was out there, people hated it. I remember having my little Bin Trill hat. Like I bought one of those hats. I bought one of the Bin Trill 40 ounce Vans hats with the New York and the hashtags on either side and all the other shit around it. Like I, I, I'm probably sure if I go out to my mom's, I'm probably sure I probably have it somewere. I bought one of those fucking hats for like $50 and, it's, and it took like, I had to pay $50 to fucking get it shipped. So I spent like $100 on a fucking snapback, right? And I remember... People used to laugh at me. People used to laugh at me, mate. They used to call me corny, call me lame. Now look, mate, the people that designed that stuff have now gone on to essentially be, you know, some of the most important designers in culture right now. The ones that are literally leading the way. The ones that are on the mood boards of all these big brands and executives and trend forecasting companies. Like, these are the guys actually paving the way. These guys that did these hashtag things and, you know, they were all awkwardly standing behind behind the decks of some shitty pioneers that they hired. Like, this is what it's led to now. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it continues. Um, DJ Kent Ben Trill and also worked as creative director... Sorry, also worked as artistic director for Ye, the rapper designer formerly known as Kanye West. Presser remains at the helm of his namesake brand since it launched in partnership with New Guards Group in 2017. The brand stocks is stocked sorry, at several luxury retailers, including Sess, Essence, Harrods, and End. The story of him starting, um, what you call it, Heron Preston, and also then having, you know, having the ability to work in New Guards Group and Virgil being the guy that brought him in is really sweet. I think the idea was like, oh, he kept designing one-off little things and then Virgil just kind of challenged him like a friend and said, hey, you got to do more, man. Put out some more stuff. He made some more stuff and then Virgil kind of passed him on to his friends over at New Guards Group who also own Off-White and then the rest is history. Then he went into partnership with them and then and they ended up producing, you know, or manufacturing whatever you, you, you want to call it, his brand. It's pretty cool how that story ties together. So he really has a lot to thank that guy for everything that he has so far. So it continues. Preston said that he was drawn to the opportunity to work at H&M because he welcomed the challenge of elevating the brand's overall product offerings. Wow, he's really on it, isn't it? Look at that. He wants to elevate what they have. One guy. Big up him. I was bored at the time H&M approached me. I'm glad he said that. I'm glad he said that because I was going to say the last two or three collections of Heron Preston have been pretty boring and devoid of inspiration. They've all kind of felt the same. Now, I don't blame the guy because there's only so many ways you can present that almost utilitarian, workwear-inspired, you know, fashion. It's all like clothing. There's only some way you can present it. And unfortunately, when you put stuff on, I think there is there is something to be said for fashion runways being an opportunity for you to actually do fashion with a capital F, to actually kind of try to have some themes, have some overarching ideas, maybe try, you know, and tell a narrative, whatever it may be. There is something to be said for that because I think just having a runway and then having just T-shirts and hoodies and jackets go up and down it, it can kind of feel a little bit boring especially if it's done the same way. And I felt like the last three seasons for Harry Preston felt a little bit tired, felt a little bit boring. So maybe this opportunity came at the right time because this might inspire the guy and give him a little bit of a kick up the arse to get HP back up where it is because of the you know back and forth that he's going to be doing between H&M and his own brand. Because effectively, he's going to be designing on three levels. He's going to be designing for and advising on H&M menswear overall. He's going to be working on his own capsule collection under H&M. 
And he's also going to be working on his own brand. So he's going to have to be splitting his brain across three things, plus whatever collaboration he has going on, the DJing stuff. Like, he's got a lot on his plate. But I think all of those things on his plates will actually make him not bored and will hopefully inspire everything that he does so don't be surprised if you see uh incredibly le an incredible leveling up leveling up from the guy going forward it can so let me just repeat this it says i was bored at the time hm approached me but what they were offering was more than a typical boring collaboration more than just about the product if they just asked me to slap my logo on a t-shirt and hoodie i probably would have told them no Imagine being that paid up and that papered up. You can say no to the H&M bag because it didn't inspire you. Man, that's goals, bro. So yeah, that was the whole article of what he said. So congratulations to Heron Preston. And for me, personally, um, having met the guy once many, many years ago, I have to say, he if anybody deserves it, it's him. He legitimately might be the most, the nicest guy I've come across in fashion with the exception of Virgil legit and i always say nicest because i think of it unfortunately that scene or that industry a lot of it is like people are kind of only nice to you when they know they can get something out of you or they know you're someone prominent as well it's like a little bit of a clout for clout what can you do for me i'll scratch your back i'll scratch your back you know you scratch my back i'll scratch your back type of thing right it's a bit annoying but it kind of is what it is but sometimes you meet people in this industry in fashion in streetwear and stuff who are just nice to you because they're just nice to you because they're just fucking nice people and heron and fucking virgil were two of those type of people that i met across my time in this little scene who were just genuinely nice because i had absolutely nothing to offer those dudes and they were just nice off of the bat really cool to the point where i, I even had a quote-unquote meeting with heron sat down with him met some of his friends got taken around places and stuff the same thing happened with virgil obviously that was more of a work thing but these are things that you don't really get from people that work in fashion because unless you're somebody prominent unless you've got a big amount of followers unless you've got your own thing going on unless you want to suck their dick and be their intern they're not really going to give you the time of day so when these guys are nice to you it usually is a sign that they are nice people so sometimes nice people in fashion don't win right they, unfortunately they don't really win so it's nice to see the nice guys actually get an opportunity and also with me being the flipping fan and the lover of streetwear that i am it's just nice to see another guy from the school of streetwear graduating and getting these amazing positions it just goes to show that there is really no limit you could go from designing you know t-shirts screen printing you know bootleg Givenchy shirts you could go from flipping cutting out you know cutting up flipping gucci material into stars and putting on the side of air force ones you could go from making brick paperweight things you could go from all those type of things that he made over the years and then suddenly you're flipping designing on the level of h&m for the masses you could go from making little niche art books of your friends like these little yearbook things that you made back in the day and then suddenly now many years after it you're doing you know um Odemar flipping collaborations you're doing collaboration with args your collaborations with nike you're doing this with h&m there really is no limit when it comes to streetwear there really is a limit the limit that you have is only your own imaginations there's no need to go to fashion school there's no need to fucking suck the dick of the fashion elites over there who don't even want you because the funny thing is once you make it in streetwear and you're the super popular person those fashion people that probably don't want you and look down on you will have to come and kiss the ring anyway because this is where the culture is at this is where the flipping vibes are at the the, the you know everything is out here you know the music the fashion you know the it's all over here so it's cool to see heron get the opportunity and i can't wait to see what he does when he finally does put out the stuff because it's a pretty interesting collaboration overall and i think one of the main things that kind of stood out to me that i thought was really on point was this bit here where it said what they tapped him to do right and i think it was somewhere here there there we go so they have a clear clear idea what they want from the guy and i think this is part of the reason why i think this collaboration is going to work out because i think there's some clear what do you call them in fucking marketing is it deliverables deliverables or something right something along those kind of lines that they've kind of outlined so he knows exactly what they want he knows exactly what his remit is and they're just gonna you know tell him go crazy and that's what i like because it says here um they are uh, um, they say Preston will have a wide range 
wide ranging reign over H&M's um, menswear offerings, overseeing four pillars, design advisory, which will see him consult on the brand's mainline menswear, special collections designed specifically by Preston, talent curation intended to allow Preston to connect creatives in his network for additional collaboration with H&M, and fashion innovation, um, which will include projects such as circulatory um, initiatives, in which consumers can submit their old clothing for use in future capsules collection designed by Preston. That is clear black and white what they want from you. Then all you do, you meet those targets, you exceed those targets, Bob's your uncle, Granny's your aunt, the sales are up, bang, here's a, here's a contract extension, more money in the bank, more G-Wagons for you, more fucking fancy trips with your wife around the world. Like, everybody wins. Everybody fucking wins. And the, and the great thing I love about it also is the fact that they realized that part of the reason why they can flip and tap into him is like, he's always been known as like Mr. Popular guy, right? The cool guy that has all the cool friends. And they want to tap into that also. They want to be a part of his network. They want to bring Heron's network into H&M or they want to bring Heron's, H&M's, H&M down to Heron's network. They want to kind of bridge that gap because they never really saw themselves as cool. They want to be able to sell loads of stuff, but also be cool. Because nowadays people are doing that. These kids now are doing hauls on TikTok where they are proudly showing off the shit they bought at Boohoo. They bought a fucking Fashion Nova. They bought a Sheen. So fast fashion doesn't have the stigma that it once had when I was growing up. Where if you wore that sort of stuff and you're into fashion, that like I am, or you went to streetwear, people looked at you a bit, people looked down on you. If you had on like, you know, H&M jeans, but you had like a Supreme t-shirt and shit. They're like, nah, man, you should be going and getting neighborhood jeans, number nine jeans, um, triple R, you know, trip, what's it, uh, RRL jeans, um, what, Evisus, you should be getting those. But nowadays kids are, you know, willingly wearing head to toe H&M, but then, you know, 700 pound dunks and stuff. So I think they know that and they're trying to, bridge that gap and make sure that the kids that are queuing up at these shops are still going to go and buy the stuff that they're going to make because it's going to be cool so i can see some really cool stuff happening going with forward with that so big up heron for that let's quickly check his instagram and see what he's saying about it look at this fucking picture bro like honestly streetwear pays isn't it there was an era where like you know back in the day maybe that nick diamond guy was maybe the most outwardly rich looking streetwear guy that exists but now you've got all these guys like that sell fucking t-shirts and hoodies wearing fucking aps <laughs> it's fucking cool isn't it it really is cool to be honest i'm not gonna lie i think this might be the post announcing it it's a pretty interesting pose there sat on a cube on a mirrored cube with this really interesting pose he kind of looks like a kind of looks like a swastika in it a little bit if you put his hands up you look like a bit of a swastika in it if you if you put his hands up like that but <laughs> pick up hp for that pose um the caption says what's next let's call it brain over brand it's bigger than product a new concept for a better future an entirely new ecosystem um for me for us for the culture for the world more soon love to see that man so yeah can't wait to see what he does I think we're going to get a lot of cool shit from him coming out of flipping H&M. Loads of cool ways to kind of present your ideas on that kind of grand scale. I can't wait to see what he puts out there because, again, once you get those type of keys, right, to that kind of factory or to that type of processes and manufacturing, you have to take advantage of it. So I can't wait to see what he ends up doing with that going forward. It's going to be pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. So big things are going for flipping hair and pressing out there. Let's see what I'm going for it. It's going to be cool. It's going to be inspiring. Everyone's going to be on it. And I think lessons definitely have been learned from Tremaine's, you know, diabolical experience at Supreme. And I think he's going to appreciate it and work with it well. But also, like I said, I think just because he's had a, you know, a job within those fields before, um, he's worked within those type of constraints. He's had that kind of oversight. I think he's going to be fine, to be completely honest. I think he's going to be more than fine going forward. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it when that does end up dropping. And then I think I've got another last thing to talk about here about Heron is considering this via Wallpaper Magazine, which is called Heron Preston Launches LED, a studio and convention-defying creative hub. It says as follows, 
I guess it's what we saw earlier, this this kind of repurposed um, cardboard thing that's been turned into some sort of desk and stuff. Let's see what the blurb says. Heron Presser might be known for his um, eponymous New York City inspired label, but his creative enterprises go way beyond that. No stranger to collaboration, Preston has launched LED Studio, which stands for Less Environmentally Destructive, a creative studio celebrating an in now creative freedom that intentionally eschews conventions and restrictions in order to understand where contemporary culture is today and where it needs to go you know what i kind of clocked i think he's basically doing the same he's kind of doing like a tom Sachs, isn't it he's kind of following that kind of template a little bit but more with a fashion tilt it feels like there's like creative there's like design studios there's these collaborations Right, yeah, he's kind of attacking things on these time of different planes, but it's kind of feeling very, 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 very Tom Saxish. I like it. I'm not. I like it because I always thought if I ever had my brand, it would kind of operate in that same type of way, where it kind of is more of a design studio, and then you may have different pieces that you design that may be clothing, it may be furniture, it may be art installations, it may be experiences, it may be spaces, um, it may be, you know, print, whatever it may be, but it's mostly a design studio. You kind of think of it that way and then you approach every problem like a design problem and then you're able to kind of maybe approach it from more interesting angles and whatnot and come up with more interesting ideas. That's a good way to look at it instead of kind of being fashion-y because the fashion angle, you know, you kind of have to have that brain. You kind of have to have that Alexander McQueen, you know, J.W. Anderson brain of actually thinking on that heady fashion level which not all of us have so i think the design thing is probably a little bit easier to kind of get in that way and kind of figure something out you know what i mean it continues creatively he has the power to change the world it's the greatest rebellion in existence president preston states i believe in meaningful disruption and creating with purpose the concept sustainability has become diluted i believe more honest term is less environment destructive i love how everyone does this right you, you hate the term that exists, so you create another term. Then somebody else comes and says, I don't like less environment destructive, so I'm going to make another term. I'm going to call it destructive environment, DE. And then someone else comes, it's like it's like a continue. Everyone wants their own little phrase, but again, it's a, it's a worthy cause, so I'm with it. I love the logo also, to be fair. Um, it's very, very, it's giving, you know, Munich-based record label. I love that. It continues, part art and design studio, part sustainability practice, LED studio just uses a new ecosystem from designer that encompasses a clothing recycling and donation program called Excess, a social community called World, and a retail shop to sell ideas, a YouTube channel to host content, and even a scholarship program titled HP LED initiative now that's pretty sick man to be fair virgil will be proud of this man heron is walking the walk he's talking the talk and he's walking the walk it continues initiative to help diversity not diversity diversify sorry i, I listened to too much Tremaine. um initiative to help diversify representation in the fashion industry um preston is also introducing service center a creative agency working across ideation to execution for clients bringing his relatable, disruptive viewpoint to a wider range of collaborators. Before Preston launched his fashion label in 2016, he opened the but cut. You get it. So yeah, cool little thing going on 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 the heels of the fucking or, or just before the HM collaboration got announced. So he's got many, many things in the fire at the same time. Big up HP. <clears throat> Big up HP. How do you see where it goes?